Hi everybody, Kat here. Uh, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be learning about perspective. All with a fall painting, of course. You know, got to stay in the October theme. Um, fall has such beautiful colors, so I want it to last as long as possible. So what I'm going to be using is an image that my husband um, created through a, an app, a free app. I wanted to share it with you in case you need reference photos. It's quite interesting. So when you're looking at things, you are looking at them from, uh, from up close. So the things in the forefront, the foreground here are larger and more detailed than the things that are in the back and far away from you. They can be, unless you have really great eyesight, they're probably out of focus and they look smaller. So today we're going to do a leafy path. So what my husband did on this app, he said he put the prompts in. He said, I want a man walking on a leafy path in the fall. And this is what came up. And so I'm going to use this image because it's a free image. I'm allowed to use it. It's my husband's. And I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to wet the back of my paper because I want it to just stay down on my foam board. I'm using my uh, pretty excellent paints and I'm using my Dollarama paper and um, my inexpensive, my least expensive brushes. This dollar store paper is absolutely amazing. I like it better than the Canson, that's for sure. So um, I hope you find this, this works for you too. So just to, to start off, I'm going to do a little, uh, whoopsie. So I'm going to take my yellow ochre and I'm going to follow the path, the shape of the path that's in the reference photo. So it comes to like a V shape, kind of, the part that's farthest away from me. Okay. And I'm just going to fill, lightly fill this in with some yellow ochre. It's just to lay a, lay a, a ground, so to speak. Okay. There we go. So these would be say tops of bushes and and this is going to be the path down here like that so i'm going to make this darker and more red and orangey and all that stuff but for ne right now i'm just i'm just getting the lines in it's just so that i i know where i'm at okay so it comes down like this and like this and of course it doesn't look, it's not straight like that. So we're going to make it uneven as soon as possible while the paint, the paper and the paint are wet. I was supposed to wet the front of my paper too, not just the back. And I totally forgot. This is a couple of bit videos in today. I've filmed a few so that I can get them out to you. Um, this week I had some free time today, so I thought I'd do some extra, extra filming. So I'm just, whoopsie, that's why it's curling because the back of the paper is wet and the front is not. So we're just going to use my large brush to wipe paint the water on. There we go. Now what I want to do is create a nice light pale sky. There's a tiny little bit of sky showing through here. So I'm going to take some cobalt blue. And I'm going to take a smidge of this orange just to cut it a little bit because I want it to be a little bit of a gray sky. I don't want, um, I don't want it to be bright blue because fall, there's a lot of cloudy days to come in. So I'm just dropping this in and I'm trying not to put it everywhere just simply because I don't have time to dry the paper. If I did, if I did have time to dry the paper, what I would do is I would do the whole, excuse me, I would do the whole blue sky and then I would 
dry it and then I would do all my trees. But I did kind of do that anyway. Okay, so we'll see how this turns out. I'll tell you why. Because if I add red leaves onto this and it's not quite dry, then they're gonna turn what color? Purple. So I don't want a purple sky. I don't want purple leaves. There, let's see how this turns out. So that's it for the blue. I want it very, very, very pale. Now with my large, it's quite a large round. It's this one. It's the Royal and Lang Nickel. You'll, I went over the, my brushes in the first video. Watercolor 101, the first uh, video. So I'm gonna take some yellow ochre here. Yellow ochre is like a goldy color. It's beautiful, it's very fall-like. And this is kind of the color oak trees go when, when they start to turn. So I'm just putting some in there and we'll deal with the, what happens to them after. I'm just gonna let that dry. Now I want some, on the other side, I want some red trees like what's in the image. So there's orange and there's red. So I'm gonna start with some orange. Excuse me, that's the wrong orange. I'm not that fond of this orange, to be honest. Some oranges are really, they're a little bit too, they're a bit too, too. So I'm gonna take a smidge of cobalt blue I'm going to throw that in there just to try to tame it down a little bit and see. Whoopsie. Yeah, I think I like that better. The other one looked a bit like neon. So I'm going to start with some orange. Okay. And then I'm gonna go in with some nice red, a nice deep red. So I think I'm gonna go with the vermilion. It's an orangey red. And if I don't like it to deepen it, I'm going to add a smidge of uh, green. So I'm gonna go, this is the vermilion, I believe. No, that's the cad red. Cadmium red is nice too. I just wanna try the vermilion because it's a bit more orangey. So this is pretty wet. So what's going to happen is it's going to spread, bleed out, which is fine. I still find that orange is a little weak. But since this is quite wet, we're just going to leave it and see what happens. Okay, so I'm just going to put a few, a few random red leaves around here. And while it's, since it's a little bit too wet, but in a, in a couple of minutes, I'm gonna show you a little trick. So for now, down here, where the bushes are, I'm going to put in some, I think I'm gonna put a bit in a bit more yellow ochre down here, because I quite like that color. Okay, down here too. And I'm gonna put a bit of olive green I'm just doing like a, a swirly kind of motion. And when this is not wet, we will be able to define a few more things. Now, while my brush is wet and damp, I, I cleaned it. I'm going to soak up a lot of the water and then I'm gonna make a little lift some paint right there in the middle of the bushes and the trees because I don't want, I want the path to look like that's exactly where it's going, is that a way? Now, I think in here, while I have it with me, I'm gonna, just gonna drop in some yellow ochre here. And I 
I don't have a paint a nice Payne's gray and this set I like the Payne's gray but it's it's a bit blue so I'm mixing it with a bit of black because I don't really want blue and I'm just going to add it into these if you can see here behind the trees there's more yellow ochre and there's a slight grayish look underneath them so I want to incorporate that while it's wet because I don't want it to stand out like a sore thumb after the gray so I just want to do it while it's wet so it'll naturally spread out and take on a nice fuzzy look and the same over here I just want to you have to make sure your brush is clean this is something too I, I just forgot I, it, it turned green because I had yellow on my brush, so I'm getting more Payne's Gray and a bit more black. Just going to dab it in my clean water. It's called Payne's Gray, but it, it does it does have a, a, a quite a bit of blue in it, and some companies are more blue than others, so it's not an actual true gray. It's not an actual true gray. Okay, so now that you're, I'm going to show you a glare on, see that? This is kind of what you're looking for when you're about to do this next step. I am going to put some table salt on the trees. And the reason I'm doing it is because I like the look of it. The salt will absorb, salt absorbs water. And so you need um, some the paper to be not sopping wet it needs to be wet but it can't be sopping wet because the salt's just going to float in it so you sprinkle the salt and what will happen is it's going to absorb the water and the paint right where you drop it and then it leaves these lovely little um, like in the winter they look like frost it looks like frost and and in a on a tree it looks like little tiny maple leaves almost and it could look like frost snowflakes um, coral so you have to let this dry naturally for the salt to take effect so i'm going to pause this video and i'll be right back okay i'm back now it's it's pretty dry the paper's curling a bit so what i'm going to do is take some masking tape i'm going to flip it stick it kind of like stick it to itself and then I'm going to place it underneath where it's quite it's buckling just because I didn't start out with tape along the edge so I don't want to do it now okay so I'm going to brush off gently brush off the salt um, make sure your hands are nice and clean because the oils from your fingers can change your paper too especially if you're using cotton paper Okay. If you're not sure if it's off, you can use a, a piece of cardboard or a credit card or whatever. I have my, my, the chart that I made with you a few videos ago about values, my value chart. So I just had that sitting beside me, so I used that. And there we go. That's done. So now that we've established the background and where the foreground is, now we have to... Um, start adding some detail so that you can tell that this is a path full of leaves and we're going to put a little guy on it and we're going to add some trees and see how that goes you can make this as detailed as you like or uh not like it's it's up to you some people love to, i like to paint um i like to take my time when i'm painting and so for the sake of the video though I will not bore you to tears with all the details. I, I, I can continue painting later. But for now, what I want to do is I want to put in these, these trees. Okay, so you can see that the light is coming from, from this direction. Because the, what, the reason I know that is because there's shadows cast here. So that's how I know that the, the light is coming from over there. So that's what we're going to continue to do. So I'm just going to put in a few trees. 
I'm going to use my brown. If you don't have brown, you mix green and red makes a really nice brown. Blue, yellow, red. And if you want a yellowish brown, you add more yellow. If you want a reddish one, you add more red. If you add more blue to the mix, you're going to end up getting a, um, excuse me, you're going to get um, a grayish brown. Okay, so I added some burnt sienna to that because that's, that's a nice, that's a nice uh, tree trunk color. So we're gonna start. Just wanna make sure you can see, okay. So we're gonna start here on the path and I'm just gonna work my way up and they do not have to be perfect. It's a bit too watery just to start, I can tell. So I'm gonna get more paint and do not add water to my brush. Okay, there we go. Okay, that's one for now. I'm gonna do another one. Do one right here. I'm gonna do one that's kind of right here off the page. And the buckle is, is a little bit annoying. Um, that's why, mostly that's why people tape their, their stuff down. Um, normally what I do when I'm not doing a tutorial and I paint like this, I just keep the back wet, but that can be a problem when you're trying to work on dry paper because if the back is wet, the front is never completely dry. Okay, so we're gonna add with a smaller brush actually. I'll keep the brown on that brush. Um, with a smaller brush, go in, make it as thick as you can to work with. And I'm just gonna add a few, um, just, just smaller branches coming through the trees. And by no means do these have to be perfect. And I, like I've said in my other videos, the, the less you fuss, the more natural it ends up looking. And I quite like that. So there's a few back here that are just tinier trees. They're not quite that tiny, but <laughs> they are in my painting. Okay, we're going to make some, and the reason you just skip your brush around is because some of the branches are peeking through the leaves and some aren't. They're not all on top of the leaves. They are under the leaves, behind the leaves, in front of the leaves. So I'm going to add another tree here, close to this one. This is a bit of a gnarly one. And what you want to establish here is that the trees are getting smaller and less, they're getting smaller to the eye and less detailed. So now we're going to do this on the other side as well. And you can add as many as you like. So for time's sake, I'm going to start over here. I'm going to do the same thing going to go in with my brown and my burnt sienna. Nice thick and pasty. And I'm going to start over here. See these are the bushes, the green. So I'm going to start just, just right there. And then the further down we go. The smaller and smaller they get. Now 
Now, the other thing we want to establish is the, the ground. So I wanted some leaves and things on the ground. So the leaves that are in the foreground here are going to be bigger than they are in the back. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to use this, it's full of brown. I'm going to try to use a bit of a dry brush here. So I'm going to take some of my red. So there's hardly any water. It's just, just enough to get it started. And I'm going to put my brush sideways and make sure you can still see this. And I'm just going to graze. Whoops. No, it's not dry enough. Brush it on my paper towel on sideways. And I'm just going to graze the paper like, like this. And the drier your brush is, the better this is going to look. This technique, um, the paint, with this technique, the paint just grazes along the top and, and adheres to the tooth of the paper, like the coarseness of the paper. And so it not only gives you a lot of texture, but you can see the perspective. You're, you're, you're showing your viewer the perspective of the painting because your strokes are harder and harder to see the farther away they get. So this is red. So now I'm going to go in with some yellow ochre and that's pretty dry, but I just need a teeny bit more water, like a, like not even a whole drop. So I'm going to rub that in. I'm going to take my towel, dry it off. This time I'll start down here since I made that boo-boo there. So I'm going to start down here. And it's okay if, if the, if it's bigger down here because it's closer to us, right? I'm gonna go in and get some more, dry it off. Okay. Now we're getting them somewhere. So now I'm gonna get some orange. What did I do with the orange before? I added a teeny tiny bit of blue to cut. It looks like neon to me, so I don't like it. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to add some brown to it, I think. Yeah, that's nice. That's, that's nice. Dry it off. Start here. Okay, so you just keep going to keep layering. But as you get closer to this narrow point, you're gonna, you're just gonna graze it. You're, you're not, you're hardly gonna be able to see that you've touched the paper here. Here, as it gets closer, it's gonna get bigger, bigger strokes because you're gonna see it better. It's the same thing when you're doing water. That's how you do that. So I would like to have a bit more red because there's a lot of red in these leaves falling off. There's a lot of gold here. So I'm gonna do a little bit more red. And to that, I'm going to add a bit of brown as well. Or you can add some of your olive green, which I already used in the painting. So that would look nice. There we go. That's a nice natural color. It's quite juicy wet though. So I'm going to dry it on my towel, absorb some, and I'm going to come this way. Actually, I think now I'm going to start to place, place some leaves down like to make it look like they're actual leaves. So you just turn your brush back and forth. I don't know if um, anyone watching ever watches Diane Anton. She's a painter on YouTube as well. And <laughs> she's, uh, she's, she's a lot of fun to watch. She's, she paints rather uh, carefree, whimsical stuff. And uh, that's her style. That's that's what she does, and she does it best. So I wonder if you would. This is kind of in her. It reminds me of her. Like I think of her when I'm doing this because she's so laid back about her paintings, and it, everybody comments on it too. Like she's she's just very laid back, and they turn out they're quite cute. So if you like that kind of stuff, you should check her out. 
So I'm just come get so the leaves are getting a little bigger and more intense as they get closer because you can see them better. If you don't like doing this, you can always splatter, but just make sure when you splatter that you're you're splattering bigger and your splatters are smaller up there. Okay, so I'm gonna go a bit more, a bit thicker because now my brush is very dry and I wanna give this a nice red kind of, um, I want it to look mostly red. You can see all the other colors, but I really like that the reddish gonna show through. That's a bit big, but oh well. My painting, that's okay. Okay. Now why I, I wanna leave this rather fuzzy is because it is farther away. So the more fuzzy I leave it, the more the viewer will know, oh, that's, that's far away, that's not close to us. And the more detail, if you want them to know that it's closer to you, you not only want it bigger, you want it to have more detail. That's the important part. And in watercolor, a lot of people portray that differently. Like you can, you can paint very detailed stuff, almost like photo, um, like a photo image, or you can do it with your, your values, using your values so that you see more and more shadows. So if, for this yellow ochre tree, I'm gonna go in with some more yellow ochre. No, that was not yellow ochre. Mm-hmm, that was close. I almost put orange on my beautiful oak tree. So I'm gonna just make myself a spot. And I'm gonna get some yellow ochre. This is such a beautiful color, yellow ochre. Well, I think so. Now, along with that, I'm going to add in a tiny bit of this, this gray and this brown. Just a bit, it's a bit watery though. I don't want it to be too, too watery because it's gonna, it's gonna spread too far. I don't want that. So I'm gonna dry off my brush completely on my towel and I have this little paper and I'm going to soak this up and see if I like how it turns out. Yeah, I don't mind it actually. I just want it to be very subtle. I don't really want detail because I want you to think that this is kind of far from me. And don't forget if you're using cotton paper, I, I've mentioned this many times, this, do, this dollar store paper is really good, um, but you will get more time to do detail as well you, because it stays wet longer. It's different. It behaves quite differently. And then on the red side, you see where the salt, it didn't activate quite like I wanted it to, but I was kind of rushing it along. Um, it leaves like these little, it, they almost look like little maple leaves or something. So I don't want to cover them up completely. And I do want to have a little bit of detail in them because they do look like they're slightly closer to us, right? So I'm going to go in with my concentrated red and I'm going to add some of the green because I really like that that uh, combination. And I'm going to, maybe I should use my smaller brush. I'm gonna give the impression that we can see uh, leaves. Like I'm just gonna make jaggedy kind of shapes and that will tell the viewer that these are leaves. Well, especially because they're on a tree, right? Now also, you might notice that I'm putting the leaves on the 
outside and not inside the tree, which is usually darker than the outside of the tree, right? Because it's in, because the light is coming from this way. So that orange glow is to show that the light is coming from the back of the tree, not in the front. I'd like it if you uh, could leave me some comments, guys. If you if you like watching my channel and you give me a like and you subscribe, what that does is it allows more people to see the videos, uh, number one. And the second thing, you'll be notified. And leaving comments, you, you know, I, I would love to, to know what you would like to learn or what you would like to see me paint. You know, maybe I'm painting things you're not interested in, or uh, maybe you'd like to see more of something. I noticed that on my videos, a lot of people like the the tutorial type, like not just advice about painting, but you want to know about color theory and um, by all, I would love, I would love to know what you'd like to know because if I can get, I can make more videos, more videos that you'd like to see. So there we go. That's our, that's our tree so far. And now all I'm going to do is I'm going to add a tiny f bit of, I'd like to put some branches in, into these, um, these far away bushes and trees, just very, very, very gently though. So I'm going to use that a bit of that gray. So I, I I'm using, um, did I use cobalt blue? You know, you know, I tell you, maybe I used a teeny bit of black in it. I don't remember. <laughs> I already forget. <laughs> if you remember, put it, write it in the comment box. Okay. So I used cobalt blue, a little black and a lot of water. And I'm just going to, you know, I think it's a bit too watery still. It's hard to lighten the color with water and then not have it be too light, too watery. So here we go. I'm going to try this now. It's a bit less and I'll dry the edge, not the tip, just the edge. And I'll see if I can get some very faint um, branch lines in here. Oh, I hope you can see with my big head in the way. Sorry about that. I will check it when I edit it. If my head's there, I'll try to get it out. <laughs> okay. And for these green bushes over here, I am going to add a bit more detail to them simply because they are closer. Now, the more watery I go in, with these details when it dries it's really going to fade so you're going to see less and less detail as I go along because I added a lot more water so it's the same with here a lot more water and then I'm going to add more paint less water here And don't worry if it looks dark. If you've ha if you have enough water, it's gonna it's gonna fade. So now, because the light is coming from that side of the tree, we're gonna make the tree trunks darker on this side. So it's coming from the left. So we're gonna darken the trees on the right. And don't be afraid to be rough and make um, jagged lines because trees are not smooth. That's the one thing in nature, you know, it's not smooth. So you don't have to worry about being so, so perfect when you're painting trees, especially. 
I end up having the best luck when I'm just, I'm just, I, I'm just so relaxed about it. I end up having more luck. So on the right side of everything, I'm trying to add a bit of dark. And then as we get farther down, it's less noticeable, right? So everything, it just gets dark. So on this side, it's the right side of the trees as well. Now what I want to do is cast a shadow from these trees. So shadows can have very, very, very sharp edges, but I do not want sharp edges because the ground that they're growing out of is quite lumpy and bumpy. So I'm going to take a light, a bit of, um, I'm going to start with some black and I'm going to add it to my brown just to make sure that I can work with a watery enough paint and not lose the, the darkness because the shadows are quite dark. So I'm going to start with this, this one. You can hardly see it. So it's going to come up and go down. Okay. This one too, I want it to look like it's that, that the path is kind of has a, has a dip to it here. So I'm going to come down this way. and then go across. And so these ones, we're just going to have little, little guys because they're getting farther and farther away, right? And these ones, the shadow is behind them. It needs to be a little bit darker along the edge where the bush and the leaves meet. So I'm going to use, um, what am I going to use? I'm going to use a little bit of brown and green. I think that would be, no. Yeah, maybe. Let's see. Rather undecided today, aren't I? Let's see if I use this green. Oh boy, I went in the wrong green. <laughs> Oh, look how nice that is. Oh, that's so nice. Not what I want, but it's nice. Okay, let me see if I add some of this brown and this green. Hmm. Mm. Yes, I like that. Ends up being kind of like a dark, a deep olivey green. So I just want to go in the edges here because it kind of looks a bit too bright and shadowy for, bright and shiny for a, a, a fall painting. And I'm going to go in with some red here on the side of my brush. And here, I think I'm going to put a bit more of the orange. That's what that was. It was the orange that we started off with. Just to show that it's brighter on that side. So all the orangey kind of leaves are highlighted over there more than they are on this side. Okay. And now with this, I'm just going to make a shadowy color. I'm going to put the green in with the uh, light, the grayish black that I made. And I'm just going to slightly, it's still too dark. Yeah, that's better. I added some red to that. See if you just play on your palette. You know, you never know what you can come up with. So what I want to do is give the impression of shadows under the leaves here. Not a lot, 
just the closer you are, the more detail you can see. So we're just going to add a little bit of this in. And by the time you get down here, look, you just put teeny tiny little. It's just, it's just to imply that you can see some shadows under the leaves, right? But you really wouldn't see anything up there um, because you're too far away from it. So I hope this video really, uh, I hope it helps I hope it helps you with perspective. I know that can be a tricky thing. Um, but really, really practice it because once you get that, you can make sense out of a lot of your paintings, whether it's a human face, an animal, a landscape. As long as you have your perspective right, it will look um, appealing. That's the word I'm looking for. It'll have an appealing look to it. So we're going to end it there. I know this was a bit long. I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, so please consider giving me a thumbs up and uh, subscribing to my channel. And um, leave me a comment. That's what I wanted to remember. Leave me a comment if you have any. I'd really like to hear from you. So happy watercoloring. Bye-bye.